Kumusta mabuhay magandang gabi and maligayang pagbabalik sa akin chano Ako po si Ovela, I am your host Ovela and like I said in yesterday's video I watched the documentary called The Kingmaker It's almost a two hour long documentary I have to say it was a fascinating documentary Unfortunately, I was not able to uh, publish my reaction to it because YouTube was not okay with it. They legit blocked my video, okay? So I tried everything to go around uh, the copyright issue, but I wasn't able to, okay? So I've decided that YouTube was not gonna stop me from sharing my thoughts, okay, about this documentary. So I thought I should read uh, a review. I chose a review on YouTube about the, the Kingmaker. We will read it together and see if we agree with what this person said. But also, this is also basically an excuse for me to tell you what I learned from this documentary. Uh, but before we start, uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Music Game News because that is where you can DM me your suggestions. And without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so The Kingmaker. What is The Kingmaker documentary? The Kingmaker documentary is basically a documentary about the life of Imelda Marcos, who is the wife of uh, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, who uh, is the father of uh, Bongbong Marcos Jr., who is trying to win the election 2022. So Imelda is the mother of Bongbong Marcos Jr. All right, so the Kingmaker review by Brian Talerico. All right, there is an island of dying animals in the Philippines named Kalawit that exists in its current state because of the unchecked opulence of Imelda Marcos. Yes, indeed, that is 100% true. That is when I was like, my goodness, I completely disagree with, with what Imelda Marcos did here. So basically, Imelda Marcos, from what I saw from this documentary, is a woman that has taste and that likes to dress up very nicely and likes expensive stuff. So at some point she went to Kenya, where I lived in five years and where I actually went to like multiple safaris, you know, where you go into the wilderness and just uh, see the animals, feed the animals and stuff. So she went there, thought that the animals were beautiful, gorgeous, and was like, huh, why don't I bring some of those animals to the Philippines? You know, because basically I can, all right? So I don't know how she managed to do it, Clearly, there was something shady behind the paperwork, but they managed to bring uh, zebras and, and giraffes and animals like that to uh, the Philippines and they put them in an island called Kalawit. So, already there, I was completely against that because animals are in a, in a, in a region for a reason, you know? Uh, Bringing them to another region of the world is not healthy for the animal, okay? Maybe they won't be able to survive in that region. You know what I mean? Um, and it's even worse when you bring them to that country, new country, without bringing with them the people that know how to take care of them, you know? Or the medication, you know, that helps you take care of them. And that's exactly what she did, you know? She did not bring any medication or any uh, paperwork that would tell you how to take care of those animals. So that's the first point that I thought was horrible and wrong. The second one, which is even worse than the first point, is that there were people living in that island. She evicted them from their home, all right? So 
Basically, what this documentary tells you is that she didn't even accommodate them and ask them, hey, would you, would you be okay if we you know, got you new houses on another island so that we can put the animals on this island? No, apparently she just evicted them, all right? And it was 200 and something people, you know? So that's not a small number. And I thought that was just horrible. You cannot do that. She, she, she they suffered because of that. Those animals, uh, those uh, people suffered because of that. Actually, both suffered because of this, the animals and the people. So, you know, I did not like that. All right, let's continue with this review. She wanted animals in the Philippines who weren't native to the country. There you go. And officials were bribed to make that happen. It is a perfect symbol for her insidious, egocentric, blinding greed in that it is the kind of landscape-changing thing people with power and wealth do without considering the consequences. Unfortunately, I agree. I agree with this. Uh, as I was watching this documentary, I felt like power, money, and fame slash clout um, went to the head of Imelda Marcos, but also her husband. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that they were bad people. I have no idea who they were. You can't judge people from afar, okay? Um, but yes, this documentary gave me the feeling that they let all of those things go to their heads and they felt extremely powerful, powerful because of that. I mean, man. Uh, they showed Imelda Marcos just asking people to build her uh, big, 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 um, you know, buildings, massive buildings. And, and she asked her husband to build her a, a bridge, the bridge of love or something like that, which is very funny because at the end of the documentary, they showed you that uh, people were being, being tortured on that bridge, okay, which is very contradictory, right? It was built for love, but in the end, it was used to torture people. So it's like, what? Um, and yeah, and she mentioned in the documentary that uh, she, she missed the clout. Like, she lived most of her life in, with a, a very specific lifestyle, like a very rich and wealthy lifestyle, and she's, she has gotten used to it. And it's not like she's not rich anymore, because you clearly still see her um, going in the Philippines and, and you know, uh, giving money to people left and right. So she's still clearly, clearly very rich. And there is something actually very fishy as well when it comes to her um, belongings, okay? Like uh, her paintings and her shoes and her dresses and stuff. Because apparently there is an organization in the Philippines that tried to go to her house or apartment or something like that to uh, seize some of the stuff that they considered uh, belonged to the Philippines, I think. And uh, when they got there, they did not find those specific things, uh, a few paintings and stuff like that, because they showed you the comparison between two pictures. And that's very fishy to me. If you do that, it means there is something behind the scenes that's not very clear that you're trying to hide, you know? And that's not a very good sign. Uh, anyway, let's continue with the review. Um, what, where did we stop? Uh, director Lauren Greenfield, our best filmmaker when it comes to documenting the extremely rich in movies like Generation Wealth and The Queen of Versailles returns to this island a few times in her excellent The Kingmaker. And I do agree, it is an excellent documentary. I was hooked to the screen from A to Z. Like the story is told really, really well. And I'm actually very surprised that uh, the Marcoses and Imelda Marcos decided to agree to do this documentary about her because it does not serve them well. I mean, seriously, maybe there are a few compliments here and there, but most of this documentary sheds a very negative light on uh, Imelda Marcos and the Marcoses in general. Maybe not so much the son, who is trying to become the president of 2022 of the Philippines, 
Uh, but yo, that was not a good move. Unless it was, because maybe it brought the Marcoses again to the forefront, you know, and people started talking about them again. Maybe it was a good move. I don't know. Um, all right. Recognizing how its almost haunted nature symbolizes the ghost of the past of her subject, Marcos herself. Um, intercutting interviews with Marcos and her son with archival footage and other experts on the Marcos regime, Greenfield has put together a haunting reminder that those who have extreme power rarely, if ever, consider the consequences of their actions. In fact, they often think the word uh, consequences shouldn't apply to them. Yeah, that's the feeling that I got from this documentary. I don't know if it's the truth or if it's uh, Greenfield, so the director of this documentary that had that actually wanted to convey this message through this documentary because it's also a possibility. But I did not come out of this documentary thinking that the Mar Marcoses. Uh, were this uh, fantastic uh, family that uh, helped the Philippines and saved the Philippines. Although, although I have to say that um, during their reign, because clearly Ferdinand Marcos stayed at the helm of the Philippines for so long, things in the Philippines were not that bad. Things got worse with time, but they weren't as bad as they were they are today. Some people even say that in the documentary and they show you the poverty in the Philippines today. All right. So things have not gotten better. So, you know, it's normal that you ask yourself, maybe things were better with uh, the Marcoses, you know, at, on, at the power, you know, when they had the power in the Philippines. So we don't know. We don't know. Um... All right, uh, take what you will from the film in terms of timelines, uh, time, no, timeliness for the current American political situation, but parallels to unchecked power around the world feel intentional and add depth to the Kingmaker. We could all be on an island of dying animals if we're not careful. That's true, that's true. And man, they show you in this documentary the influence that Imelda and her husband had uh, on on a lot of people, and the, the the you know the personalities, the famous people that they knew all over the world, the way she talks about them as if they really were her friends, and some big big personalities kissed her hand and danced with her and sang with her and stuff like that. I mean, she knew so many presidents and head of states, it's insane. It's legit insane. Oh, my goodness. I have to admit to being concerned when the Kingmaker began. Was this going to be a reclamation project for a controversial political figure? Because yes, when the documentary starts, it's not that bad, you know, it does not uh, speak ill really of Imelda and the Marcoses but as we go along we see everything that happened during their reign and the way they are also coming back you know into the political landscape in the Philippines well uh, would we be shown that the public image of a woman with rooms full of shoes was really a complex leader okay so yes yes when you hear Imelda Marcos apparently automatically automatically people hear 3000 pairs of shoes okay so that's just a thing and that's because when um, they fled from the Philippines because they felt like their lives were uh, in peril or jeopardy uh, they left quickly all right and they were not able to take everything with them so they left a bunch of stuff and the Filipinos the people raided the um, the president's house, I think. So they found tons of shoes and dresses and stuff like that. So yeah, she is known as the woman with uh, a bunch of shoes. But she does not hide it. She loves to dress up. 
she loves to take care of herself and to put makeup on and stuff like that. Um, all right. At first, it feels like an attempt to humanize Marcos with early scenes of her throwing money at any problem, including children in a dilapid dilapidated cancer ward. Although that quickly turns. There you go. So yes, but uh, they showed her giving money at the beginning of the of the documentary. So like her car stopped and out of the window, she was just giving money to, to children. And then towards the end also, they showed her going into this cancer uh, hospital or something like that. And she was also giving money to, to children. Bop, 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 bop. Like it was nothing basically. Um, if documentaries like The Kingmaker often makes their subject relatable, this film shines a spotlight on an insane degree of ego, corruption, violence, and gross greed. Okay, so I, I'm, not go, I'm not gonna go as far as say all of these things because I don't know. I, I don't know. Yes, because I also know that documentaries and movies have agendas. Okay, if and when they want to show something specific, they will edit the documentary or movie in a way that will convey that feeling, you know? So I don't know, but yes, this documentary does show her massive ego, which is very, very funny because at the start when she got with uh, her husband Ferdinand Marcos, she did not enjoy the fact that she was living a political life, that she was the first lady. She even got kind of sick. She had to go to the US, see doctors about it and stuff. But uh, eventually she accepted it and, um, you know, she started to enjoy it and like it, you know, and she dove deep into it. Uh, some people may even say that she was the leader behind the leader, you know what I'm saying? So that's crazy. But yeah, definitely there was apparently corruption. Uh, we saw violence in this uh, documentary, you know, between the Filipinos and the Marcoses. Uh, something terrible happened with uh, uh, Aquino, uh, who uh, was shot. He was shot, that, that shocked me, legit shocked me because he was first, when he was perceived as a threat to the Marcoses, he was put in jail, I think, or captivity for like seven years, I think. Then he got sick. So Imelda went to see him and he says it himself. He says that she went to see him and asked him if uh, he would be okay to go to the US for treatment and stuff. And he was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do. He went to the US, stayed there for a while, and then at some point decided to come back. And you, there was footage of him in the airplane, all happy, people happy that he was coming back and stuff. And from what I saw in this documentary, as soon as he stepped out of the airplane, he got shot. I mean, like snipered. And till this day, we still don't know who did it people, well, I don't know if it's people or just uh, people from this documentary uh, clearly trying to say that it was Imelda Marcos who, who, who asked someone to kill him, you know? But uh, obviously she denies it. Uh, she denies it. She even says that she had nothing against him and that how could she kill someone if 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 in real life she doesn't even like conflict you know and she says that she was kind of she knew Aquino before she even knew her husband Ferdinand Marcos so uh, they made it sound like maybe he courted her or something like that I don't know but yeah this dude apparently was very smart you know and could have been a great uh, leader for the Philippines unfortunately it didn't happen but it happened for his wife uh, who also apparently was very smart and her son I think also became president yeah oh yeah and by the way uh, for a very long time the Philippines or more like Aquino's uh, uh, wife hey I didn't
didn't see you there. Well, now that you're here, um, why don't you celebrate uh, for making it this far into this video by subscribing to the channel, by turning on that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. And of course, and the most important thing, to like this video because it does help out the channel tremendously. And now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to my business. Uh, did not allow uh, the burial of uh, Ferdinand Marcos, so Imelda's husband in the Philippines as uh, a hero's burial, okay? So they kept Ferdinand Marcos's body in a glass box, which I thought was very creepy to be honest with you guys. So he was maintained in a box and you they even show you Imelda Marcos going to visit him, kissing the box, and kind of crying maybe, I don't know. But I thought that was creepy, but eventually, um, when uh, I think Duterte became president, uh, he was allowed, they were allowed to, uh, to bury him properly, and I will come back on uh, Duterte. Um, all right, as the film goes on, Greenfield doesn't watch Marcos continue to dig herself into a deeper hole. She keeps handing her bigger and better shovels. By the end, Greenfield has assembled one of the most insightful portraits of what is basically sociopathic behavior excused by wealth and privilege that a documentary has ever produced. I don't know if it's sociopathic, it's possible, but I also think it's just a woman that has gotten old. I mean, she's in her 90s and she lived a life of wealth, okay? And you know, as we grow older, we have a hard time adapting and changing. So she is not gonna change for anybody. So she is just set in her ways. And you know, because she's that old, I don't know if we can really trust her words, to be honest, so I don't know. Uh, Imelda Marcos would have you believe that her wealth was not only earned, but good for the Philippines. Yeah, right. She speaks in early scenes about how far Manila has fallen from her time in power. She hands out money to poor people. She laments the better times for her country under the power of her husband, Ferdinand. Look, if it's true about the money that they have, uh, they have, there are no excuses. There are absolutely no excuses. As a human being in this society, you do not need millions and millions and millions of dollars to live a proper life. So if you have that kind of money, you should uh, give it away or invest it in things that would help people. That is, I think, just like, uh, you know, basketball players and soccer players and athletes who are paid like $200 million over five years. It's insane. It's sick in my opinion. There you go. Greenfield does allow, her, allow for a bit of humanizing early on as we learn about the loss of Marcos's mother, that's true, at a young age, and the emotional toll Ferdinand's infidelity took on her. So yes, it's true, apparently she comes from very humble beginnings. And yes, Mar that, that I was shocked. No one told me about this because, trust me, you guys contact me very often about uh, politics, you know, in the Philippines. I get the people who love the Marcoses and the people who don't, slash like Lenny Robredo. And you know, you give me reasons as to why this one should be, uh, in, uh, you know, should lead, rule the, the country and not, not the other one, you know, and vice versa. But yeah, no one told me that, uh, Ferdinand Marcos cheated on his wife many times and what showed me that this woman is smart and knows what she's doing is when they showed us that she recorded him with another woman. She put the recorder under his bed, that's what they said I think. So we clearly hear Ferdinand Marcos and another woman and I think every time uh, he would want to do something that was not okay with her, she would 
uh, showed him, show him the, the tape and be like, hey, if you don't cooperate with me, I'm gonna divulge this tape to the world. There you go, and ruin your uh, reputation or something like that. So, you know, she's, she's, ooh, kind of scary this woman to be honest, but, and I'm not saying that uh, the uh, Ferdinand's infidel infidelity is a good thing. Absolutely not, okay? I think that infidelity, the, if there is infidelity, it's because the couple uh, originally decided to, to be in a monogamous relationship, right? So if that's the case, that you should not go see other men or women, you know? Uh, but if the couple wants to be in a poly, poly, polyamorous or polygamous, you know, relationship, then it's okay. So what Ferdinand did there, I think is wrong, especially since he is the leader of the country and they're not supposed to, to have that kind of relationship. But, you know. Uh, but one can almost sense the filmmaker starting to see through Marcus's image control even in these early scenes as she details the corruption that forced the Marcos regime to fall. By some estimates, the Marcos family stole $10 billion uh, from its own people. So there you go. If that's true, <laughs> billion, $10 billion. That is very shameful. That is so shameful, especially to the Filipinos who are the kindest, most heartwarming people that I've ever met. It's the opposite that happens with me. You know, I, meeting Filipinos, it makes you want to give them and not steal from them. They basically took, like, if this is true, they took advantage of, of their kindness. And again, I'm not against the Marcoses and I'm not for them either. Like I said in many of my videos, I'm just someone out here sitting on his chair in Canada, informing himself and trying to understand what's going on. That's it. That's it. And I'm not even saying that the, the, the son is like his father or mother. Uh, she contrasts the false narrative that continues to be presented by her subject over and over again. Um, what emerges is a study in propaganda and revisionist history. Yes, there was a heavy emphasis on revisionism and you guys keep contacting me about revisionism as if uh, the Marcoses have such power that they were able to basically change uh, the facts of history on the internet and in the books. I don't know if that's possible, but if that's the case, then yeah, they're very powerful. Marcos would have you believe her husband was a great leader who helped his country, that her son is the future of the Philippines. Legacy means the world to her and even that she ended the Cold War. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not believe it as she was saying it. Someone like, uh, like a big leader told her that she was the one who ended the Cold War. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, hey, apparently it, it could happen. It could happen that, uh, Bongbong bon Marcos uh, Jr. becomes president of the Philippines in 2022. Uh, and maybe I should start talking about that right now. So I feel like they've been working on this for a while. And I don't think that uh, President Duterte becoming president was, uh, was a choice of the Filipinos. I think they made sure Duterte became president so that uh, Bongbong Marcos Jr. becomes president after, after him. I think there is a strong relationship between the Dutertes and the Marcoses. I mean, first of all, Duterte, I think, was the one who was okay with uh, burying Ferdinand Marcos in the Philippines and give him a hero's burial. I think that I think in the documentary they mentioned that it was Ini, the daughter of Ferdinand Marcos, who 
gave the money to help with uh, Duterte's campaign. So there is a strong connection between the two. And now, and now, uh, Bongbong Marcos Jr. wants to become president. And guess who's trying, who's gunning for the vice president uh, uh, seat? It's Duterte's daughter. So clearly there is a huge connection between the two and they are helping each other out. I can understand how this can be scary, but at the same time, Filipinos, you know, from what I hear, are happy with uh, Duterte's uh, years uh, at the seat of, uh, of the president. You know, they think that he did a pretty good job. And it's very interesting how different the two are, Duterte and uh, Bongbong Marcos Jr. in personalities and the way they deal with stuff, you know. Duterte feels very rugged, you know, very raw. And the other one feels very classy, very elegant, you know, in the way he does things. So, you know, it could have been calculated from the beginning. So we're going to put someone like Duterte as a president, you know, someone who's like raw and is not scared of anything and stuff. And then we're going to come back with someone that's classy because people want to see change, you know. So it'll make it easier for the classy guy to, to become president. Also, another thing that I remembered that I thought was super interesting between the two. What was it? Ah, it just skipped my mind, but it might come back later. So let's keep reading. Uh, let's keep reading. Greenfield starts to turn her camera away from Marcos and to the people who suffered because of the decisions made by her and her husband Ferdinand Marcos and the result is harrowing and moving. When Greenfield gets to the horror stories of how political enemies were raped, assaulted, tortured and killed, the Kingmaker becomes something less like Queen of Versailles and more like the act of killing. I did not watch the other two documentaries so I can't speak on that. But uh, it was really towards the end that they uh, were interviewing these uh, the people who suffered from uh, you know, the, the Marcoses who, who got raped and assaulted. And I mentioned at the beginning, the, the people who were assaulted on that bridge of love, you know. Um, and the filmmaking here is Greenfield's best. Note how she films these scenes in sparse rooms and often with no score, allowing us to lean in and listen, contrasting them against the lavish rooms in which she speaks to Marcos. That's true. It's true. There were there was music from time to time, but not that often. You really do feel close to uh, uh, with uh, Imelda Marcos. Perception is real, and the truth is not, says Marcos. <laughs> that is insane. That is perception is real, and the truth is not. They both are real. I think she is a master of denial and image manipulation to such a degree that it feels like she believes her lies. Mm -hmm. We do get the sense that she believes her own, her words, basically, even if they come off to the viewer as maybe a little shady. Corruption and fraud may be the truth, but that doesn't matter nearly as much as the image she presents for her people. It's the perception that defines her, and it's way more important than anything that could be considered true. Perhaps the most disturbing thing about the Kingmaker is that Marcos's attempts to rewrite history seems to be working in some ways. Oh man, because this came out I think in 2019? And uh, if this documentary had come out today, they would not say in some way. They would say, it's freaking working. Because, yeah, in 2019, when this came out, um, or, or maybe a little earlier, uh, Bongbong Marcos Jr. was trying to become vice president. He did not win versus Lenny Robredo. Lenny Robredo made it uh, to the top. She became the uh, vice president, the 
the vice president. Oh yeah, another thing that shows me that you know Duterte and the Marcoses are working together is how he spoke about Lenny Robredo. You know, even though he was president, she was his vice president. He just basically said that she would not be able to to lead. There you go. You know, so basically saying, don't vote for her, go for the other guy or the next person, you know. And he probably knew that the next person was going to be, you know, Bong Bong Marcos uh, Jr. Uh, but yeah, it is definitely working because, man, from what I'm seeing, Filipinos are very excited about Bong Bong Marcos uh, Jr. becoming president. Him president means the Marcoses are again at the top of the food chain and that uh, Imelda Marcos just succeeded. <laughs> she, she came back from exile. I mean, they were exiled. She came back to the Philippines and she made her way back to the top. Damn. Damn. It's, it's, look. If everything that they said that was bad about the Marcoses is true, then it's freaking chilling. It's scary as hell. But if it's not true, and everything good that they did <clears throat> is true, then it's great. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one could argue that image control led the country to where it is now under the Duterte regime. Mm-hmm. The story of the Marcos legacy isn't over. Nope. Nope. Far from over. But the Kingmaker is a major chapter in it and world politics as a whole. Um, yeah, I wanted to also mention something that I find a little bit disturbing about the world that we live in, but also in the Philippines. It's, it's how people regular i'm just gonna call them regular people i mean i'm one of them um perceive uh, people famous people and people that have more uh exposure than us the regular people they are perceived as gods they are idolized even if these people are just human beings with flaws just like us and in some instances they can be way worse than us you know but the fact that they have that much exposure and they choose obviously to show only the good side, they are idolized and seen as gods. And from the beginning, you know, I started this channel in 2016, I've always, you know, opposed, I've always opposed, I've been, I've been opposing myself to that. Every time people talk about artists like they're gods, I'm like, no, uh-uh. I even I always tell people that my favorite artist of all time is Michael Jackson and even him I don't idolize him he, he was just a human being a flawed human being clearly you know but I admire his music I don't I, I don't necessarily admire the human being yeah there are some you know human beings that you can admire but never idolize them because they're just human beings with flaws you gotta you gotta, you know, take a step back. And I know that sometimes your life is not going well. And the only way for you to kind of feel alive is to live through somebody else. You know what I mean? But you gotta fight hard to work on yourself first. Because the way I see it, it's, it's, a, it's a cake, right? If you give that much attention to other people meaning that you're giving them a huge chunk of this cake and nothing is left for you so you got to fight for what's yours man so yeah and in the philippines is just something that's very prevalent man they use the terms idolizing so often i mean in the rest of the world they use the term fan i use fan because to me fan is not that hard but the philippines they use idolize idol like and every time you say something you critique or say something that they consider negative about this person that they idolize, they start hating you and try to cancel you. Though this, you know, new culture, cancel culture 
you know, stuff. I think it's very unhealthy. I think you should care for yourself first and obviously your, uh, your surrounding, your family and friends. But yeah, this was a very, very interesting documentary. Um, I think the person that, uh, you know, shot it and directed it did a fantastic job. But like I said, I, I don't believe everything that I watch. So I'm not believing everything that this documentary said. And I'm not saying that what they said isn't true either. Okay. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the uh, elections of the Philippines, I just hope that the uh, most qualified candidate wins. Um, I've reacted to a bunch of uh, interviews, you know, and debates, and I think Lenny Robredo would do a fine job from what I saw and the energy that I got from her. Um, Bong Bong Marcos Jr., like I said, uh, he also gave gives me you know good vibes uh he seems like a classy guy knows how to speak i think he would be very good with international relations you know between the philippines and uh, other countries i just hope that he puts filipinos first if he ever wins man and does not uh you know um does not repeat the mistakes of the pasts because whether what they said about them is true here or not, uh, presidents are not perfect and they make mistakes, right? So hopefully he'll do the best that he can do. And I just hope that, uh, because I don't like it when presidents are elected twice in a row. So I hope that if even if he gets elected this time, that he won't be reelected again, because we always need fresh, brains and fresh eyes at the top of a country that's just my opinion and you got to make sure to surround yourself with like-minded people or not even different people but that you know you have a healthy relationship with because when you surround yourself with like-minded people you tend to uh, reduce your your circle and the way you see things you know so yeah uh what else can i say uh yeah i mean i enjoyed my time and it definitely gave me a different perspective on uh the marcoses and the election that's going on now but uh remember that i'm just a bystander i'm not trying to uh, push anyone's agenda or anything like that this is just my channel and i like to share the things that i that i learn uh with my community and that's it and uh, if you guys enjoyed it enjoy it and enjoy this video then great uh, share it like it and uh, maraming maraming salamat po let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on this um, take care of yourselves may the most qualified candidate win and I'll catch you guys in the next video peace Thank you for watching, subscribe here and please like the video to show your support and appreciation for my work and turn on the notification bell to be poked for future content. Yeah, yeah, yeah.